All right, our last little demo here, we are talking about the uh, color fade animation. So here I just have a little uh, Tumblr. This one came off the cloud library. Um, and I'm going to open up my material graph so you can see what's going on here. So the color fade animation is what's going to drive my, my, or the color fade node is what's going to drive my animation. Everything else here is essentially the same as what we've been covering. Again, super basic, uh, like my getting started idea. Uh, you have your texture. It's using color to number to drive the roughness, and it's also being applied to the bump. That's how you're getting this really nice brushed effect on the actual model. And then all I've done is I've taken the color fade and I've attached it to my color input of my, my metal that's on the surface of my, my parent material. So when I do that, it'll automatically uh, populate my animation timeline with that animation that you see here. So this is this will give you an idea of the preview of what's going on. You know, it'll, it'll go through the colors that I've determined. So um, this comes in really useful if you have an animation where there's a lot going on, there's rotations or exploded views, and you want to show colorways while that's happening. Uh, if, if the goal is to show a stationary product and then and show some colorways, depending on your setup, it might actually be faster to just quickly render out different uh, colors or, or finishes as images and then composite them in, in, in like an editing program later. But if you're really kind of trying to make it be incorporated into a more complex animation, then you would use a color fade animation. So back to the material graph, you can see in my properties here, I have uh, uh, the colors that I've determined to be what I want it to fade through. Uh, I have it set without a blend mode, so it's really sharp transitions, but if you'd like it to fade, you can hit blend, and then when you actually come in here, you'll see that there's a gradual transition between the colors rather than such a hard event. So let me actually show you that color fade node. Let me unplug that. And let's go to our animations and color fade. So if I plug in this color fade and I open that up, you can see that it's just a regular texture, uh, excuse me, a regular gradient black to white, uh, nothing special. This lets you control to the degree that that gradient is operating. And here's where you can kind of control like when, when it happens in context to your uh, animation. You can change these colors, just double click on it and you can pick anything, you can color pick as well if you see another color that you like and then it'll assign that color. And then if you wanna add more colors, you can hit this guy right here and it'll populate the uh, gradient with another color node. So let's say I want this to go from white to red to black that one will be white, but you notice that it's, it's not really, it's kind of all over the place. There's nothing like specific occurring at a, at a lot of time. So these little sliders, you can kind of maneuver them and use them to, to reduce how much fade there is between layers or, or how much it kind of bleeds into the next layer by just adjusting these guys right here. So that, that's how you go about building out your um, color fade animation. And as I said, it automatically populates your, your animation timeline down here. You can preview it by sliding through and that's your color animation.